Hey there, thanks for tuning in to our January 2024 Community Design Challenge Recap. If you want to see some of the awesome submissions from this month's Design Challenge, along with our winning submission, stick around. Hey there folks, Tim Slate here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, as many of you know, one of the many challenges that a lot of folks have when it comes to building their instructional design and e-learning development skills along with creating samples of work for their portfolios is having the opportunity to practice on real world projects in a practical way. And so that's exactly why we created our monthly e-learning design challenges inside the e-learning designers Academy to help you put your skills into practice and build samples of work for your portfolio without all of the stress and uncertainty that comes along with picking your own topic. And so each month we issue a new e-learning challenge, which provides a real world topic and prompt based on a hypothetical company. And as part of the challenge, participants are tasked with developing a complete e-learning course to solve a specific set of learning outcomes. And of course, as part of the challenge, we also provide a style guide and brand assets for the hypothetical company, which provides guidance on the use of colors, fonts, logos, and much more. And then at the end of the month, we review all of the submissions, host a recap, just like the one you're watching right now, and of course, announce a winner. Now, the great thing about our monthly e-learning challenges is that each month as we announce a new challenge, we have a growing library of sample project topics for you and others to pick from to continue growing your skills and of course, building samples of work for your portfolio. So with that said, let's take a look at the details from our January 2024 challenge, check out our top submissions along with our winner. And of course, if you'd like to follow along with me, check out the link down in the description where you can see the details of this month's challenge along with all of the submissions. All right, so here I am inside our eLearning Design Challenges space inside the eLearning Designers Academy. And this is where you can see all of our past, current, and of course our future design challenges that you are open to participate in. And of course, here's our January 2024 e-learning design challenge, which was all focused on safe lifting techniques. So for this month's challenge, Briggs Engineering, our hypothetical company, is a manufacturer of large metal automotive component components and employees at Briggs assemble components in a busy shop and ship products to customers nationwide. And so during a safety walk in the factory, the HR and environmental health and safety manager observed several employees carrying out various tasks in their work conditions, and they noted some various safety violations, including bending at the waist, twisting while lifting products, lifting loads that are designated over 50 pounds, carrying large stacks of products, et cetera, et cetera. And so for this month's challenge, participants were challenged to design uh, an e-learning course on safe lifting best practices. So understanding what they should be uh, uh, lifting, how to properly lift it, and when to look for assistance. And so as with all of our challenges, we provide a set of learning objectives. And one of the things I want you all to keep in mind if you choose to participate in the future is that you are free to scale up and down your submission as necessary. So we always say complete one or more of the following learning objectives. Describe and how and uh, why bodily injuries can occur when lifting improperly, identify the power zone and explain the importance of safe lifting, and then complete OSHA's four stages of safe lifting and when if needed, utilize lifting assistance. As always, we also provide some requirements and constraints. Uh, you're free to use any authoring tool you'd like. We provide some resources on visual design or using articulate storyline if that happens to be your tool of choice. And finally, we also provide our style guide. So as you can see for Briggs Engineering, we went with a little bit more of a, a darker uh, theme with some interesting shapes and effects applied to images. And it'll be interesting to see how this was all translated into uh, the various submissions. So we have our fonts, um, our colors, and of course the Briggs Engineering logo. So with that said, let's jump to our top submissions. All right, so the first of our top submissions comes from Harpreet Carr with her submission on Safe Lifting Training 101, Ensuring Safety and Efficiency in Material Handling. Now, right off the bat, one of the things I love about Harpreet's uh, course is how well she uh, really embodied the style guide, everything from the cutout effect here with the image and the effect and the logo and the colors. So fantastic work on that, Harpreet. All right, so I'll go ahead and click Start here. In this training, you will learn how to evaluate a lifting task safe lifting principles, and use of mechanical assistance in lifting. Select Go to learn more about each topic. 
All right, so right off the bat, we have a pretty simple menu here. So evaluating a lifting task, safe lifting principles, mechanical assistance, and then of course our conclusions. So I'll go ahead and click here to our first topic Before here. Before lifting any load, familiarize yourself with these essential tips. Understand the nature of the object. Aware of the weight. Determine if you require assistance. Ensure pathway is free from obstacles. Inspect the surface is not wet or slippery. All right, pretty simple slide there with some important bullet points. I really like the use of the graphics. These look like Canva graphics, so great work on that. And then the overall design, pretty simple, clean use of animations, and I like that. So we'll go ahead and click next here. Turn the dial to view OSHA's recommended weight limit for the load. All right, so we have a simple interaction here. I don't know if I'd call this a click to reveal interaction, more of an experiential interaction where we can uh, move this uh, dial here uh, we're using a variable here in Storyline clearly to adjust uh, the load. And we can see here, it's safe to lift. Once we go over 50 pounds, then per OSHA, if the load exceeds 50 pounds, it's crucial to engage two or more individuals. All right, and we keep going up. And then eventually we're in the danger zone if we're above that. So simple little interaction, great way to communicate that. Um, and show that here on the screen with the numbers and, of course, the revealed text here. All right, I'll click next here. Okay, topic one complete. Very good. We'll go back to the main menu. Simple, intuitive interactions here or navigation. All right, so our second topic, safe lifting principles. I'll click on that. Safe lifting techniques not only reduces the risk of injuries, but also ensures the efficient distribution of force throughout the body. All right, so a simple little introduction slide here. We'll click next. Click each pulsing icon to learn about the various lifting techniques. All right, and again, click to reveal interaction, but great use of some simple graphics and some markers in Storyline. So lower the body, stable stance, lifting body, upright posture, load position, pretty simple interaction there. Always avoid the following mistakes while lifting. Keep your torso aligned with your feet while lifting. Do not lift heavy objects above your shoulders. Do not carry loads that block your sight. All right, some simple slides there with some bullet points. I'll go ahead and click next here. And we have our topic two conclusion slide. I'll go back to our main menu and we'll look at mechanical assistance. Mechanical aids helps in reducing the physical strain on individuals, mitigating potential ergonomic risks, and ensuring precise handling of heavy loads. All right. Great graphic here. I love these isometric uh, graphics in the e-learning courses. They just look so, so clean. We'll see some more of those here in some of the other uh, samples that we'll be taking a look at. All right. I'll click next here. Click each plus icon to learn about common types of mechanical assistance. All right. So here we have what might be considered an accordion interaction in Storyline. So I'll click here and or click the plus icon. And you can see our images change as a result. So electric chain hoist, essentially a crane, a forklift, some information there, and a scissor lift. Very good. Simple little interaction. I'll click next here. And we'll go back to our main menu. And then finally, we have our conclusion. Okay, let's do some practice. Uh, select the character. We'll go with this guy there. Click Next. All right. According to OSHA's recommendations, distinguish loads suitable for manual lifting and for those requiring mechanical aid. So we have a simple drag and drop interaction here. All right. So manual lifting is anything less than 50 pounds. So I'll drag this one over here. Uh, this one can go over there, and then we have our heavier ones. So a simple sorting interaction. Click Submit. Correct. Very good. Oh, and then we have a true or false. Okay, identify whether the following statements about safe lifting techniques are true or false. A stable stance involves keeping feet shoulder width apart. Yeah. Uh, lowering the body should involve bending at the waist. Hmm, I think so. Upright posture requires looking down at the ground. Oh, I have no idea. I should have been paying attention. Lifting the body with the back is the incorrect technique. Load position involves keeping the load away from the body. False. Let's see if I got that right. Uh, I got it wrong. That's okay. Uh, I think it is that. There we go. I was wrong on one of them. Very good. We have our conclusion here. All right. 
Very good, Harpreet. Thank you so much for participating and sharing your work for this month's design challenge. All right, the next of our top submissions comes from Michael Hennessy with his course on... At Briggs Engineering, we value our employees as our most important asset. That's why we prioritize your safety and well-being at the workplace. In this brief training session, you will learn some practical techniques to safely lift and carry objects while working. All right, great use of some video for the opening introduction. I'll go ahead and click begin here. Back injuries are among the most common work-related injuries. In the United States, back injuries account for a significant percentage of workers' compensation claims and costs, totaling billions of dollars annually. Click to hear from two of your colleagues from Briggs about how their back injuries have affected their lives and well-being. All right, before I jump in and click on our two characters here, great use of the style guide, uh, Michael. I love these isometric graphics. We're gonna see more of these here later on in this uh, demo, and then these stories here to kind of open it up and connect with the learner. Love that. I'll go ahead and click on Peter here. It's a constant struggle now. This back injury flipped my life upside down. The pain is relentless, but it's more than that. I used to excel at work, but now I feel like I'm lagging, letting everyone down. The stress seeps into every corner of my life. Medical bills pile up, and I see the worry in my wife's eyes. I miss the simple joys with my kid. It's this cycle of pain and pressure taking a toll on us all. Staying positive is tough. Some days it feels impossible. All right. <laughs> Pretty dramatic voice there. Sounds like it could be um, uh, a voice narrator for like a movie trailer. Let's go ahead and take a look at Sherry's story. Before this back injury, I felt unstoppable. Young, healthy, nothing could slow me down. But now, this constant pain is like a heavy weight I can't shake off. It's more than just physical. It's a mental battle, too. I miss the freedom of movement, the ease of everyday tasks. It's like I've aged years overnight, and it's hard to accept this new, restricted version of myself. It's not just about work. It's about feeling like I've lost a part of who I used to be. All right. What I love about those, despite how dramatic they might feel uh, or sound, it's a great way to connect with the learner, especially if anybody's ever experienced a back injury. A lot of those statements are, are very true for folks. All right, I'll go ahead and click next here. To prevent life-changing back injuries like the ones that happened to Peter and Sherry, we use the Briggs method, a six-step process for safely lifting products at work. Click on each of the steps of the Briggs method to learn more. All right, so what I like about this, it's a simple click to reveal interaction, but I really like the, the acronym as a mnemonic device to help us remember the safe lifting techniques. So best guess heaviness, we get some information here. Great use of this like box texture here uh, for the pop-up window. So we have some information about the 50 pound weight limit. Okay, ready muscles. Stretching is an important part. Stretching your hamstrings tall. Okay, very good. It repeat at least two times. I imagine that's going to come in to play a little bit later. I squat. Now it's time to lift to safely do so. Squat to the item. Very good. Bend at your waist. Grip securely. Okay, some information about that. Gradually sit down. Very good. And of course, a smile. Very good, great use of the acronym. Okay, we'll go and click next here. All right, so we have a simple knowledge check here, drag and drop to um, test us on the Briggs acronym. All right, uh, let's see if I remember. <laughs> uh, was it Brace Your Core? Nope, okay. Um, best guest heaviness, okay, very good. I like how it's continuing here. Reinforce your grip, nope. Ready muscles, I think that's it. Oops, ready muscles. Mm, I squat, I remember that one. Um, gauge lift weight, I think so, nope. Ground yourself, nope. Grip securely, okay. Mm, gain footing, nope. Gradually set down, all right, and then smile. Now that you know the six-step Briggs method for safe lifting, you can practice the technique. Remember, the Briggs method aims to keep you safe here at work and prevent you from suffering a debilitating back injury like what happened to your colleagues Peter and Sherry, whom we met earlier in this course. 
On your screen is the Briggs Engineering shop floor, and on the right are three objects that need moving. On the following screens, you will lift and move one of these items. If you need a reminder about a step of the Briggs process, at any time you can click on the small box icon in the lower left corner of the screen. If you successfully use each step of the Briggs method, you will lift and carry the item without injuring yourself and will complete this course. All right. So this is the put it in the practice part. So I'll go and click begin here. Okay, on the right are three items that need to be moved on the Briggs shop floor. Applying the first step of the Briggs method, choose one item to lift. So we have a couple of different items here. We have a refrigerator, a safe, and of course our box. Again, great use of these graphics. I mean, this box actually feels like it's in that space. Same thing with the, the safe here. It looks really fantastic. I'm going to click here to get some help so we best guess the heaviness. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click the box here. Oh, very good. Great job. Because you guessed the box weight less than 50 pounds, you can now move on to the second break step. Okay, go to step two. Okay, drag the slider up and down to ready your muscles to safely lift. When your muscles are ready, click submit. Okay, so we have a little slider interaction here. 3D character in their pajamas. You know, who knows what the dress code is at Briggs Engineering, but who am I to judge? Okay, so we can... A little experiential interaction here. I think I have to go at least two times. Was it two or three times? Okay, let's submit. Very good. Okay, by stretching your muscles at least three times, you are less likely to be injured when lifting. Very good, we'll go to step three. Okay, next, drag the correct steps of squatting to the object and then click submit. Oh, okay. Um, stand tall with feet together, hunch over with feet wide apart. Um, I have no idea. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, we're going to bend the knees and then we're going to um, tighten stomach muscles and then lean backwards. I'm not sure. Try again. By not squatting properly. Da -da 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 -da. Let's look at our help here. here. Okay, stand tall with your feet together. And then tighten your stomach, bend your knees, and lower down. Okay. Stand tall, tighten your stomach, bend your knees, lower down. Okay, so we gotta stand tall, tighten stomach, bend knees, and lower down. I think that was it. There we go, got it right this time. Okay, go to step four. Okay, select the correct location to place your hands when lifting then click Submit. All right, so we have left hand, right hand. In this case, I think it's gonna be these handles here that we have to select or hang on to. So I'll click Submit. Good, got that right. And we'll go to Step 5. Use the dial to adjust the pace of setting down the box. All right, so we have this dial here with this box here. And as I move this, that's way too fast. Let's go down a little bit. That's still too fast. Let's go down here. I want to set it down slowly. That works for me. Go ahead and click Submit. Very good. Okay, as you have completed the first five steps of the Briggs method, you have safely lifted the object. Now you can smile because you're not injured. To complete the Briggs method of this course, click your preferred smile. Oh, very good. Uh, she has a great smile. I'll click that one. Very good. All right. Great course, Michael. Super engaging. Uh, I love the little reveal of the exit course. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, so the next of our top submissions comes from Tia Pez, and Tia Pez participated and was one of our winners in our last month's uh, design challenge in December 2023's design challenge. But she participated again for our January one, and she did another fantastic job with her submission on safe lifting. So I'll go ahead and click the play button here. Welcome to a Tia Pez learning and development production. We have a few housekeeping items to go over. First, if you move your cursor down to the menu button, click okay, once and it will bring the navigation control. Briggs Engineering, in conjunction with OSHA, are proud to present safe lifting practices. I forgot. Where are you going next week? The whole family is headed down to the Cayman Islands for vacation. Wow. Are Leslie and the girls excited? Oh, yeah. I think they were packed and ready to go over a week ago. <laughs> Break's over. I better get these parts over to the testing group. Shouldn't you get a cart for that size of load? 
It's only about 65 pounds. I lift more than that at the gym. I'll be fine. Besides, it's faster than tracking down a cart. Hey, watch out for that tool. All this could have been avoided by following OSHA's four stages of the safe lifting process. Preparation, lifting, carrying, and setting down. Hi, I'm Gizmo, and here at Briggs Engineering, our first priority is your safety. Let's see if we can help Kevin and use the safety protocols that will ensure that he makes it to his vacation. All right. So before we continue forward, um, I got to commend uh, Tia on uh, a couple of things. First off, the opening screen with her face and logo saying it's a Tia Pez production. Great way to kind of brand yourself. I encourage anybody else out there looking to do something similar. Uh, it's a great way to, you know, some name recognition, facial recognition for people to remember you. Great little addition there. Love the opening little story introduction, the animated characters. Uh, and the other thing too that I really love is that, you know, if you all go back and look at Tia's last month's submission, very similar style, uh, but you can see how Tia's um, style for using the characters and the animated characters and the presentation of the content you know, how easily it can be adapted to a different branding, different topic. Um, and I love that. So Tia has a clear style and I love it. All right, so we have our animated uh, uh, next button here. I'll go ahead and click on that to continue forward. When you're preparing to move heavy items at work, there are some questions to ask yourself first. Click on the crate to open and reveal the questions. All right, I'll go ahead and click on our crate here. Where am I going with this load? Is the path clear of obstructions? Are there adequate handles? Make sure to look for slippery areas and be alert to if there are stairs, overhangs, or uneven surfaces. When evaluating how you plan on lifting the items, are there handles? If not, does it make more sense to get someone to help you move the item? Applying this train of thought to your work tasks can save you from injury in the future. All right, great animated presentation here. Great use of visual communications. I'll go ahead and click next here. Let's get moving. The rules of this game are simple. Quickly evaluate the factory floor for safety risks. There are seven items to find. To view the 360 degree landscape, click and hold the screen while you move your mouse. Click directly on the items you believe to be risks. Work as diligently and quickly as possible. This task is time sensitive. If you get stuck, you can always click on the help button. Three, two. One, go! All right. So we have a fun 360 interaction here. Uh, we have an issue here. There's a spill. Here's an obstruction. That's not good. Oh, there's something back there. And upstairs are a problem. Uh, here we got some stuff. And some stuff. And some more stuff. And we have one more item we gotta find. Okay, very good. 30 seconds, not too bad. Oh, next level. Okay, I'll go ahead and click next here. When lifting a load, squat and get as close to the load as possible while trying to keep your elbows and arms close to your body. Keep your back straight during the lift by tightening the stomach muscles, bending at the knees, keeping the load close and centered in front of you. Be sure you're looking up and ahead. Do not jerk the load. Use a smooth motion while lifting. Limit the weight you lift to no more than 50 pounds. If the load is heavier than 50 pounds, have someone help you. Or you can use a cart or dolly. Okay, I'm going to click next here. Kevin needs your help. These cartons of automotive parts are ready to ship to our customers. Help load Kevin with safe weight loads to ship all of these packages, but still making the least number of trips as possible. Drag the boxes to Kevin and click the Move Load button when you're ready to submit a load. Okay, least number of trips possible. Uh, we'll do 30 and, tw oh, and 20 there. Move load. OK, 
Okay, let's do... I'm horrible at math. Uh, that would be too many. We'll do 33. 15. Oops, does that go over 50? I have no idea. Uh, can we throw in a six pounder in there? Four pounds, hold on. He's dazed and confused. Okay, we'll do 28 and 33. Oops. Not in there. Okay, I keep knocking him out. It's my fault. Okay, move load. Oh no. Of course it was over 50 pounds. Okay. See, I'm not even paying attention now. Okay, we're gonna do 33 and then 10. I can do 15, right? Yeah. Okay. There we go, two trips. <laughs> Let's do 28 plus 10. That's 38. Very good. Fun little drag and drop challenge there. Next level unlocked. Be sure when carrying items, you do not twist or turn the body. Instead, turn your feet. Make sure your hips, shoulders, knees, and toes should stay facing the same direction. If you get fatigued, set the load down and rest for a few minutes. Look for ramps as opposed to walking upstairs when available. All right, we'll continue. Using the dials to adjust the upper and lower body, place Kevin in the proper form to pick up a package. All right, now this is a super interesting interaction. I'd love to know, Tia, how you did this. So we have some dials here and we have our character here and we can, I mean, this had to require so many different state changes to make this happen. If you just look at this, okay. So he's standing up straight. Let's do legs now. Okay, he's going down. We're gonna go down like that. And then we're gonna bend him over, oh, like that. Let's click Submit, and it worked, I did it. All right, and there's another great use of some gamification here, so I'll put my initials in here. I'll just go to Tim, Submit. I'm gonna add it to the scoreboard, so some JavaScript going on there. Once you've arrived at your end location, you'll want to set down the load in the same manner you picked it up, but in reverse. Bend at the knees, not the hips. Keep your head up stomach muscles tight, and do not twist your body. Continue to keep it as close to your body as possible, and do not release your handhold until the load is secure. All right. Since you have a fantastic understanding on OSHA's lifting process, let's see if you can go back and help Kevin so he can still go on vacation. Crepe's over. I better get these parts over to the testing group. Shouldn't you get a cart for that size of load? What should Kevin do? Locate the cart. Very good. Simple little quiz there. What is the lifting weight limit amount? 50. Very good. Thanks to your wonderful work, Kevin was able to make it to his vacation. He's well prepared for future preparation and safety risks, proper lifting form and weight limitations as well as correctly carrying and securely setting down weight loads. He couldn't have done it without you. Yes. Thank you so much for all your help. If you're ready to view the lesson scoreboards, click on the beach ball and be sure to fill out the end of lesson feedback form to let us know how you feel. All right, and we have our scoreboard here, which looks like T is using smart sheets to load here. And we can see all sorts of people have taken the course there. Very good. All right, thank you so much, Tia. Fantastic, fantastic example. Uh, thanks for participating this month. All right, so the last of our top submissions comes from Kayla Marillo with her course on Briggs Engineering OSHA At training. At Briggs Engineering, we understand that work should never compromise your health. To save your body from a lifetime of chronic pain, press begin. All right, great use of some video there. Uh, Kayla, I'll go ahead and click begin here. Workers who lift heavy equipment and materials are at risk of sustaining chronic injuries. Injuries linked to heavy lifting can happen suddenly or over a long period of time. All right, we'll click next here. Hover over Mike the mechanic's body to reveal how and why bodily injuries occur. All right, so we have a simple interaction here. And before I continue, again, great use of our colors, our branding here, simple, simple, simple design. Uh, and of course we have our hover over interaction here. So 
You can see the neck here, strains and tears, our shoulder, the lower back, very good. The knees, I imagine. Of course, our feet. All right, simple little hover over interaction there. I'll click next here. The power zone is the area between the mid thigh and mid chest height. By placing and keeping heavy items within this zone, lifting becomes safer and more efficient. All right. Move next. the dial to identify the power zone. Press the check button to evaluate your response. All right, simple interaction here. So if I move the dial, you can see it highlights these different areas. And uh, I think uh, uh, Kayla did a really great job using a dial as sort of a, a quizzing tool here. So I'll go ahead and click check here. That's our power zone. Very good, and we'll click next. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, states that there are four stages of lifting. Planning, lifting, carrying, and setting down. All right, so it was a simple click to reveal. To learn about planning. Questions to ask yourself. How to safely lift. So we have some information here. To safely carry. And to safely set down. Very good. Click okay. each image to learn more about its weight and maneuverability. Okay, so we have some different items here. Again, learning whether or not Based on we OSHA's can... four stages, select the item that can be moved without assistance. Determining which ones we can lift. Okay, so which one can we lift without assistance? I would say this can be the box here. Check that. Very good. All right, we'll move forward. A worker is carrying an item to the indicated location on the map. Select any hazards, then press check to verify your responses. Okay, simple interaction here, so... Here's our hazardous items on the map. I like the use of the map as a graphic for this. Go ahead and click check. And we're good. We'll move forward. A worker is lifting boxes. Select the image that represents correct lifting ergonomics. Okay. Obviously bending at the knees. We're good there. If an item is too large for one or more persons to carry, OSHA recommends that you use a lifting aid. Use the slider to learn about each type of aid. Okay, so a simple slider interaction here for gloves, a pallet jack, a dolly. Very good. A worker wants to move a stack of boxes. Select the correct aid. I think that's going to be our dolly here. I'll click that. Incorrect. Briggs Engineering is dedicated to improving the health outcomes of its workers. After this training, you are now able to describe how and why bodily injuries can occur when lifting improperly, identify the power zone and explain its importance in safe lifting, complete OSHA's four stages of safe lifting, preparing, lifting, carrying, and setting down, and determine when and which lifting aids should be utilized. All right. Great work, Kayla. Simple little course, simple interactions, and a great use, a uh, great combination of presenting information, testing knowledge, and also great job keeping it on brand with the Briggs Engineering Style Guide. So thank you so much for sharing. All right, so that was a look at our top submissions for our January 2024 e-learning design challenge. It's now time for us to pick a winner who will receive a $100 Amazon gift card. Now, before we do that, I want to share a bit about how we evaluate the quality of each of the submissions. When picking our top submissions and, of course, selecting our winner, we look at it from five different angles in no particular order. First, user interface design. Was the course easy to use, accessible, and intuitive to navigate? Second, graphic design. Did the course author apply solid graphic design techniques and how well did they adapt the style guide to their course? Third, visual communications. Did they use the screen to help me see what they were trying to say? In other words, did they use meaningful imagery or animations? Fourth, instructional design. How well did they create a true learning experience with performance-based interactions rather than just an information dump? And finally, overall completeness. Did the course feel like a complete piece of work? So for this month's challenge, I gotta say, it came down to two submissions that were neck and neck in our evaluations. But you know, we only get to pick one winner for each month. So for this month, we're giving the win to Michael Hennessy. What we loved about Michael's project was his use of storytelling. We loved the Briggs acronym to help us remember safe lifting techniques and the creative use of interactivity. So 
Congratulations, Michael. All right, so that's a wrap on our January 2024 e-learning challenge and a look at our top submissions and of course our winner. As always, I wanna send a special thanks to everyone who participated and shared their hard work for this month's e-learning challenge, so thank you. And of course, if you'd like to see all of the submissions for this month's challenge or participate in our next month's challenge or just use one of our past challenges as a topic for your own sample project, check out the links down in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the eLearning Designers Academy, where we help new instructional designers and eLearning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Sim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.